Hello, this is Ryan and Hugh, and welcome to Politically Challenged. Today we're going to talk about verbal racism. Oh, and for context, we're talking about the N word. I think it's just a stupid word, not just because of the racist undertone, but because I don't see the point in using it. First of all, it's in 95% of these modern rap tunes, and that's annoying. Secondly, white people still say it. It's been regurgitated and circulated around modern culture that people are just saying it regardless of race. That word basically symbolizes every negative stereotype of black people into one, including the slavery days, including the segregation, and now black people are calling themselves that word. Uh, when did you I first think, come across it? Like, in um, your, I, don't, I don't know. To, to me, it, it's just a stupid word. I don't really get offended by it at all. I've been to nightclubs and a rap song comes on and then the N-word pops out and, you've, and I have these white boys next to me singing it and I'm like, what can you do? Like, if it, what am I supposed to do if it's Kendrick Lamar and he's and he's using it 20 times in the song? I don't know. And I'm going to pretend I know who that is. Yeah, really. He's, he's not Ron, Lamar. He's Ron not... doesn't know who Kendrick Lamar is, so. Okay, do you know who Finn Balor is? I guess not. Okay, so we're even. Who's this person? He's a professional wrestler. Okay, fair enough. So, we have our I'm, niche... I'm probably the only person who doesn't know what that is. Just like you, you're probably the only person in this country who doesn't know who Kendrick Lamar is. But back to the topic. As you know, Ran is actually Sri Lankan, but apparently he can't, I can't say the T word around him. What, why is that? That's mainly for humor, but mainly because like... Oh, let's talk about it. Let's give me a brief history. Like, I'm Tamil, but I have some Malaysian in... Well, like, I have some Malaysian background down the line, but predominantly I'm Tamil, Sri Lankan. And so on. And in my lifetime, there was a war in Sri Lanka, a lot of people died. Therefore, I'm not inherently proud of being called Tamil. But I'm English, I'm born in England, therefore I am. I mean, like, I feel like I don't like... Well, I'm not initially offended, I mean, like, I remember, like, once in a school, like, I was doing stuff on my computer, and a teacher, black teacher, I don't know why I need to put on that, but he basically said, he called me a Tamil tiger, and that, that immediately offended me. And I don't know why, because I didn't care about the war, but, like... That's the T word, because that's the rebel militia that had a fight with the government at the time, and that offended me. Even though I'm not fully aware of the war, that offended me, because of the... I immediately in my head I thought, God, that cut me deep. I was offended, even though it didn't affect me directly. And that's weird, like, I don't like the word. No, it's just, I'm not, in, I'm not inherently proud to, uh, to come from that place. That uh, They had a civil war in my lifetime, in our lifetime. Do you believe that when people who are not from Sri Lanka call you that word, do you believe that um, they're associating you with the war? No, that guy, that teacher that called me that, he basically said that, oh, I said, why did you call me that's offensive? He said, no, it's not offensive. What, what, I, know, I know a Tamil guy, so that's, he, and he calls himself that, so that's clearly okay. So that, let's go back to the N-word, because like a white guy could be like, hey, you're my that word, and and you'll be like, what, you can't call me that? I said, no, I have black friends, I can say that. It's the same thing. You can't just say that. In my opinion, with an offensive word, either everyone can say it or no one can. There is no in-between. And I remember, like, I forget uh, who was singing, like, in a concert, like, it was a big concert, and the singer, basically, he gave, he was a rapper, he was basically singing, and then, you know, when that word was going to come out in the lyric, he basically gave the mic to a white audience member, and then when she sang it, everyone booed her. Even though the, everyone knew that that bit was coming up, she was still judged. Yeah, that though. was Kendrick Lamar. That's Kendrick Lamar? You can't do that. Why would he embarrass that girl? Yeah, girl, why would he do that then? Here's the thing, from my perspective, not from the perspective of every black person, just me. Basically, the N-word is inherently racist um, because of the association with slavery, because of segregation, because people would be called the N-word while being arrested, <coughs> while being beaten up, while being killed because of the colour of their skin. That's what that word means, historically. Now, certain black people say it to each other all the time, like it's, like it's a term of endearments. Here's the problem with that. People outside of the black community are wondering why on earth we're using it and why no one else can. But then, if you take it from that Ice Cube perspective, for some black people it's like we can say it to each other, but people who aren't black can't say it because it would sound like venom. That's what Ice Cube said on a talk show once. What do you mean by venom as in like? Like as if they'd say it to hurt you. I don't particularly see the word as a nice word. 
I think the taboo will kind of appeal. It's like, oh my god, it's a bad word and we're saying it. I mean, I guess, I guess that makes sense. But at the same time, it just doesn't make any sense from a logical standpoint. Like, we know that it's racist. They know that it's racist. Or at least taboo. I think you're right. I think, it's, I think that's the issue. Because some black people say it to each other thinking it's okay to say it. Some black people don't want to use that word under any circumstances. Some white people don't want to use that word under any circumstances. Some people don't want to use the word, but some people think it's fine. Some people think it's okay. I think it's a ridiculous word, especially because of historical connotations. But at the same time, I think it's just devolved into something taboo. Some black people would still say it to each other and add it to their content, whether it's music or film or TV or their books. And then they put it in there and they sell it to the populace. And obviously, especially if you live in a white majority country or a non-black majority country, you're going to have a lot of people there that aren't black reading the word, mentally digesting the word and then reciting it as you do with art and media. You say that, like Chris Rocker had a famous stand-up thing called Black People versus That. And that's very controversial. And he said, they have to go. He's if, referring to the bag ones. Is he? The gang culture. That's what he's referring to, maybe. I remember Reginald D. Hunter saying, we got into some recent trouble, like, a couple of years ago. You know, the comedian Reginald D. Hunter. He talked about, like, he gets weirded out when black people say it because he said, yo, we didn't invent it. That's why he said we didn't, he didn't invent it. Yet black people that say it, they say it as a fear, as a symbol of power, in a sense. Or is it that... That, to build that, that would be very ironic, considering what the N-word actually means. Just imagine every negative stereotype black people as a whole have been referred to, like monkeys, dogs, slaves. Imagine all of that. Imagine every negative stereotype, the fuggish culture, the gang culture. None of the positive stuff, by the way. All wrapped into one word. And it, oh, by the way, it doesn't matter how you flipping spell it. This is the best, this really? is the best, this is, no, no, this is the best part. Basically, apparently, if you say the one that finishes with ER, you're racist. But if it's, uh, if it ends with an A, it's fine. How are you having this justification in your head? It's the same word. <laughs> well, we talk about that word. Uh, I remember well, the first time I ever heard it, I had no idea what it was called. Like, I was scrolling through the channels and I watched, like, from halfway through a movie with Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, and other, it was called The Longest Yard. And like, obviously it's set at prison guards versus prisoners. And there was a scene in the library where one guard basically went to this guy, black guy and he said that word. And he said that word again and then so on. And then later on it, that white character gets some repercussions. And when I heard that word, I was like, and when the character got repercussions because like, he got attacked by another black guy, he said, oh my God, he said the word. Hmm. And then I watched that movie again, like a few days ago when it showed. And I was like, because I wasn't paying attention, but I never heard that word. So I saw that again and I thought, what does he say? What does he say? And then through like uh, later in English class, I was in like, twelve or thirteen, and a guy, Asian guy next to me said that you you could never call a black guy that word. And I was like, there's that word again. What does this word mean? And then uh, a couple of years later, I was talking to a black guy that I kind of know, and he said, "Oh, did you say that word?" I said, "What word?" He said, "That word." I said, "No, I didn't say. It. I don't even know what it means." And he said, "Oh, you can't handle it." I said, what can that word possibly mean? He said, you're too, you just can't deal with it. I wouldn't even say it. It's that bad. And then I found out a bit later, then, I, then when I was told about slavery and it felt like a anti-climax. I'm not under, I'm not devaluing the hardship of slavery. It's like, all that build up, all that build up, and the fact that I had never heard that word. And when I finally, when I found out what it actually meant, it was like, a whole world, a whole, a whole word, a whole word, yeah, that whole word. One single word sums up every single hardship that a whole race has gone through. A whole word, and I was like, it doesn't sum up. It just, it's just an example. No, no, no. It's, it's not. It's. I'm not word. trying to be offended, but like when I first found the definition of that word, I was like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That is it. That's what people get. That's why. But it's literally what you just said. It's like all the stuff you were talking. Okay. It's a completely different situation with the civil war in Sri Lanka and the slavery in America and elsewhere. But I'm saying all the bad stuff that happened with, uh, with the people that live in Sri Lanka and everything that happened during the civil war, you don't want that to be connected to you in any way. You don't want that to be connected to you. So if people call you the T word, you would find that offensive because, I'm not because of all of that stuff. 
Uh, no, it's a Tamil tiger because like I'm not gonna just, like here's the thing like you have the N word and there's some people that say it proudly. Some people you know because it's like it was the government versus some um, the the Tamils felt they were treated as a minority bad. Which is never a good sign, but like some Tamil people that I've met, they're proud to be called and um, part of that. They they think they're the fight for the good guys, the little guys. The N word to me just symbolizes every negative stereotype black black people have. Yeah, you talk about bad neighbors. I remember when I was small, like my parents moved from the place we were in Lucian when we were smaller, mm -hmm. uh, because like one night we got a brick through the window. What well, not a brick? It was a slab of pavement, and then we called the police and all that stuff. Because at that time we were all like, I was three and my sister was five, so she had a better memory of it. So like, I remember when my dad's friend came and he put his foot on the bed and he said, this was generally what he said, he said, yeah, that's definitely a brick. And I found it funny, because that's the kind of person I am. But like, as I got older and I asked my parents, like, how, wh wh why was the teenagers harassing us? And she said, no, they weren't teenagers, they were like five to six year olds, throwing stones, and they were black and white. That's, that's how silly it is. Uh, and, I th and I thought about that as a teenager when I heard that side of the story, I thought, black and white and they don't like brown people. That's, that got nothing to get coverage about, like, kind of like, and brown people can yeah, be racist too. Yeah, but there are racists of all different colours and cultures anyway. Yeah, I told you about in Big Bang Theory, I think we talked about another video, like how uh, Raj's sister dated Leonard and apparently her parents didn't like that he, she he was dating a white guy, because, yeah. I mean, that... There is like... I know, it's, it's still racism, I think we're... It's like, racism, obviously, but... Are we, I mean, we, we met that property guy, Samuel Lees, and he talked about, like, he's the white guy in that black family, and he was like, he was fine with it, but he, like, he had to integrate himself in that social, and, like, we do have to understand that, like, every culture can be racist, so... Everyone. Obviously. No, I understand, yeah, that's true. Anybody could be racist, regardless of what they look like. Yeah, every race can be racist. Saying that, I'm talking about my experience about when I first found out about the N word. Like, the BBC did a documentary, or they found loads of this stuff racist or whatever. And the, the video where they were talking about a clip, and they talk about we're going to talk about a word that's offensive, and it's called the Y word. And that at that point, I had no idea what the Y word was. It's a word that begins with Y that's offensive. That during the documentary they actually mention it, and I said, had I not watched this documentary, I would have never heard of this word. What is the Y word? I can't say it. I don't. Wait, who who is it racist to? I think it's towards Jewish people. Oh, I, oh, I think I know what it is now. Yeah, but the fact is, before that, I had never, I had never heard of it. I was like, you're literally informing me there's a racist word out there <laughs> that in my head that I've never thought of. Now they exist. Now I mean, like, like, do you, I mean, I do, they say knowledge is power, like. I wasn't even aware of it until someone told me about that, until I saw that. It's so like, well, you're aware of that word? You, okay, how do you know about that word? What? The word I just... What? Yeah, the Y word. You just told me. It's like, I don't know what word it is. It's against Jewish people. I mean, I think I might know what the word is. I'm not sure if... I, I'm not sure, but I don't know what it maybe is. Maybe it's not Y, maybe it's Q. I don't know. <laughs> No, no, no. But yeah, um, anti-Semitism is a, is a popular topic to talk about these days. I mean, they're using it to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn now, so it's being mentioned by the media like every five seconds. Uh, here's for me, like, I really don't like, I don't mind labels sometimes, but like, how did anti-Semitism become a thing? Like, like how did it become like a actual, I'm not talking about like anti-Semitism, it's such a commonly used word, like, I mean, I don't know, I don't know anyone who's Jewish, but like, it's always uh, baffles me, like, how do people care that much about how different someone is? Like, why does it matter? Like, why is it such a big thing that there's an anti-Semitism movement, this and that, and that's how Nazis started? Like, I, I find it silly. I feel like it's a matter of ignorance. Um, I feel like it's a matter of ignorance because it, there's a fear of the unknown. Obviously, it's a lot more complex like that, but I'm trying to... A lot more complex like... God, I can't speak. It's obviously more complex than that. But, uh, obviously, I'm trying to simplify it. It's ignorance and hate mixed in. So you've got a fear of the unknown. You're ignorant about other people's culture or, or uh, their upbringing or, you know, what they've been through or the, their parents' country of origin or their country of origin. People automatically presume the worst if they don't know people. So, well, not all people do that. But, yeah, some people would look at a type of person or, or a culture that they're not familiar with and they were just, they, I don't, I don't know. But obviously, 
there's there's historical connotations to some types of racism, but Hitler. Like apparently someone a friend told me a joke that Hitler doesn't like Jewish people. He got rejected by one Jewish girl and that's what happened. That's always a joke, but like yeah, it, but, it, it could slap, Yeah, but it, that's that's conjecture. We don't know if that's real. Yeah, no, that was a joke. I doubt that's true. But just but the fact is sometimes that is true. Sometimes a person's uh, bigotry can evolve from something so petty and minor and it evolves and it kind of, like you, we talk about echo chambers, it just gets bigger and bigger and you think all of them are bad. I mean, like... I mean, if I... I to, 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 to question why there's racism in the world is to question why there's stupidity in the world. It just happens. Like, yeah. there, are different, there are many different types of people in this world and, not, and they don't always get along. Mindsets clash, cultures clash. Um, people get the wrong end of the stick. People think that other people are one thing when they're not. And then there's retaliation and then it just all goes to hell. You've got almost 8 billion people in this world and no one person is the same because everybody's a mixture of their own set of ideas and what their parents told them and what their teachers told them. And the there will also be amalgamation of all the friends that they meet up with and the people they talk to and the books that they read and the TV shows that they watch and that's supposed to be somebody's personality. Sometimes, but as you said, yeah, it's it's like being in an echo chamber if you're surrounded by, if, if you're a white person and you're surrounded by only white people and they tell you how bad black people are, you're going to be more likely to be racist against black people. If you only interact with... Um, troublesome people of a different ethnicity you are more like you you'd be more likely to presume that everybody's like everybody from that ethnicity is like that probably i remember like uh uh stanley you know the marvel guy the head of marvel he talked about like even if we were all in the same country same religion same color everything people would suddenly have uh would disagree with each other with eye color height weight whatever because that's what people do no, he's correct. I mean, um, this lady called Jane Elliott, she created these anti-racism experiments uh, and she uh, separated these uh, school children in a classroom into two groups, brown eyes and blue eyes. And of course, um, eventually, uh, the two groups of children were discriminating against each other. So obviously, it, it does back up Stanley's uh, opinion about people would find any reason to discriminate against each other I mean, people discriminate against each other because of the football teams that they support. It's like Chelsea versus Arsenal, for instance. I mean, I'm just making up random, random examples. Yeah, don't you think Chelsea's traditional rival at Millwall, but it's probably Arsenal, Tottenham, Man City, Man United, no, Man United, Liverpool. Like, actually, we don't need to go too much into it. I mean, there's Nigeria and Ghana, isn't that a rivalry? I mean, that there, there has been, but I don't care about that either. But some Ghanaians that I meet, they think they're better than Nigerians. Uh, I don't know. It, it's weird because racism isn't just like white people being discriminatory to black people or vice versa. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. You can have like, you can have like people being racist. Like within the black community, there's like so many different types of race. Um, well, not either racism or discrimination, I should say, within that community. Because think about it, how many black people who are considered black are there in the world? Billions. And then you've got like all this BS, where it's like Africans versus Caribbeans, um, light skin versus dark skinned. Um, there was even uh, Samuel L. Jackson complaining that black British people are stealing African American jobs. <laughs> no, no, this, this isn't even a joke. Do you remember? <laughs> Yeah, that that he went on he 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 was on the radio and he, he he talked about was he ironic? I don't think he was. He was talking about how you know uh you know that that actor from Get Out, uh, God. He's what, been in another show. He was in the the actor from Get Out. He he's British. I know, I know. He, he was, was in he was, a, he was in a few sketches with Mitchell and Webb. He, mm. He's a comic and he's kind of getting big now. What what's wrong with him now? No, there's nothing wrong with him. It's just because he used him as an example of a black British person coming over to America and taking up uh, an African American character role. And I was like, who cares? <laughs> like, That's, like I said, he's been acting. He's was like a, like a uh, basically a glorified extra in Mitchell and Webb. He's done other comedy stuff. Well, he took him a while to get that that far. So are you telling him he shouldn't, even though he's done the years of work to get there, he shouldn't be there because he's English? 
What the, are you I don't, sure I don't, I don't, I don't. This is Samuel L. Jackson. Are we sure he's not being ironic? This is Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, he's a smart, funny guy. He would not say something this silly. Oh okay. yeah, there was that uh, white, a black comedian. I forgot his name. I should know his name. Whatever. Yeah, basically we will quote all these people and we don't know their names and it's <laughs> awful. So go on. This comedian, he was doing like, he always, he, everywhere he goes, he just, he always goes like, you white people don't know what it's like to be oppressed because he's like, he's, he's black. Oh, it's mixed race, whatever. And then he did another stand-up show. He said, you people don't know what it's like to be oppressed. And he was in Northern Ireland, and some people booed oh, him. No. And, <laughs> 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 you know, oh, no. Oh, no. You know where this is going. Oh, no. <laughs> and then after the flash, uh, got, he, he said in the stand-up, where he was in live with Apollo, he said that he realised there were different types of white people. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Oh dear. I know, it's not, it's funny, but it's not funny. Mm. It's one of those things that you you could laugh out of like just like <laughs> You you have to laugh at it from a distance and just not be there. But yeah, I mean Yeah, that's the thing, like that's why I talk about uh, we started talking about comedians. I talk about the a minority could be a black, Asian, whatever, mixed race, they're more likely to joke about this stuff, but a white comedian would stay away from it. And this black comedian, he chose the wrong place mm. to joke about it. When I was in school, uh, my teacher, when we were doing psychology, said that often, like, you know, when we talk about when slavery stopped and, like, the black people realised that they were, basically, they basically accepted everything, and then as soon as they got a bit of freedom, they realised, oh, I'm still being mistreated, and so on, and so on. And the white people were like, what, you were fine before? Why, are you, why do you want more and more and more? And that's how the civil rights movement came on. Movement. Because as soon as you gave someone who's being mistreated a little bit, they, they start to realise how bad they've been treated and then they ask for they are they're justified asking more but like to the well the basic invader or domestic depending on the the majority suddenly think why are they so angry and that's how racism can continue so they basically like we gave you this we gave you that why do you want more so that's how things evolve so basically with the civil rights movement um there was a lot of injustice that people wanted to rectify and yeah, a lot of people had to sacrifice their livelihoods. A few of them, a lot of them sacrificed their lives uh, to, you know, start to uh, put things right. And yeah, I, I, I guess it was a big stepping stone for history and racial relations. But now there are other pressing issues that black people face um, that are race related. I mean, not just with police brutality, but with other things as well. But um, I think... I think if you take all of those issues into account, it's it's interesting that there are black. It's interesting that uh, the N word is so is so controversial because you've got black people saying that white people can't say it, and then five seconds later they'd call their best friend or a girl will call her boyfriend that word and presuming they're all black and it, it just doesn't make sense to me but i'm sure somebody will come up on the comment section and give me a 20 minute paragraph long argument as to why black people should say it and white people can't and how i'm a coon for believing that it doesn't make sense that, that anybody said, should say it can we say that word um, i thought that was offensive as well that yeah offensive? It, it's supposed to be offensive basically what is, that? is that the same as the n-word no or? basically a coon is like um apparently it's a black person who like who d betrays black people for the sake of white people is like oh wait you always said a snowflake no uh no wait, not a Ramesh snowflake Ramesh Ranganathan always says he his mum always calls him a coconut brown on the outside white on the inside is that weird is that, no but is a, co that, is that a, co a coconut's different a coconut it, it, it's stupid because people just because um Unfortunately, not every single black person in the world subscribes to every single preconceived notion of what a black person is supposed to be. So if any black person is deemed to act white or to um, be a white person painted, they're called coconut or Oreo. That's a thing as well. You've got white people thinking that they're blacker than uh, black people because they're not rich and they're working class. It makes no sense to me, but again, that's 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 people but yeah you've got uh you've got oreos and coconuts apparently black people who act white like i've been called that before for instance again i couldn't count less but 
apparently there are certain notions that all black people must follow. I don't believe that, but some people do. But since I'm not stereotypically black, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, one would call me that. That, but that's all that means. But a coon is completely different. Context means everything. I'd say that if context doesn't always add to this. I mean, if we're, if we're talking, if we're going all the way back to one of our first podcasts and we're talking about... The right to offend? Is that, no, was that, was, you're talking about something? Yeah, the right to offend. If we're talking about that guy that got fined like 800 pounds and almost went to prison because he trained his girlfriend's dog to do the Nazi salute, then yeah, context means everything. Obviously, he wasn't being anti-Semitic, but because people got so offended by it, he almost went to prison. You say that, I, I remember that, I heard that, and I saw an old episode of QI, I'm not sure you know who this lady is, Will Be Wax, she's done interviews, she's interviewed. No, I know who she is. Red hair and that. No, she's a, yeah. She's fairly, she, she's not as well known now, but she was, she kind of peaked at some point. But anyway, uh, she talked about one of the old episodes of QI, she joked about her, her mum actually trained her pug to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Her mom, and she jokingly said that, and no one in the audience said, "Oh my God!" They were like, "It was funny," and they left it because it's it, it's the funniest image of a little pug just doing that. I don't know, like it's like. I mean, that's the natural reaction, but he did almost go to prison for it. And then what 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 added insult to injury was that all of these so called far right Caucasian people, like Tommy Robinson, people like that. They would basically defend him, saying, "Oh yeah, he was well and within his rights. He wasn't being offended." But because of the reputations of those people, um, the uh, he got judged harsher. He got judged. He was judged even harsher. Like I said at the time, like I said, he shouldn't go to prison. But given the the magnitude of the backlash he faced, he should face something. But like, if we say something offensive in private conversation, that doesn't mean anything. If someone records it, they're the one who's breaking the law because they record us illegally. But if we publicly go out and do that, and it causes the backlash, he should technically face some responsibility. And he did. He said he paid a fine and all that stuff. So well, he, did, he, did, he, did, he he went through. He had a punishment. He 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 went through public ridicule. Had his freedom threatened. Paid a fine. I think that's enough for a freaking video. <laughs> anyway. The dog's fine. So that's an important thing. Mm. So, as you said before, <coughs> with the N word or the T word. The Honestly, word, there's so many words. Well, if it if it's if if they're racist words, I don't see why anybody should be saying it. But you can't stop people from saying what they want to say. That's my point. Like I think. It... And if it's and if and as you said, if if it is if it is um something that's so terrible to say, it would it would not logically make sense for some people to say it, be allowed to say it, and some people not to be. Yeah. Yeah, either everyone says it or not. Allowed to say it, it. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't make sense for some people to be allowed to say it and some people not to be allowed to say it, because especially if the people who are allowed to say it are the very people who would be the target of the racism in the first place. Yeah. So as a final point, in a nutshell, I don't believe the N-word is just taboo. I mean, there are racist connotations. I mean, you could say that it depends on who said it, but really it depends on whether there's racist intent behind it. Well, context means everything. Would you say that context matters or sometimes? Basically, I believe context is what separates the taboo from the downright racist. So if somebody uses any of these words, whatever they are, um, to anybody, like if they're trying to be cool or taboo, <coughs> then obviously they're just being silly. But if they're being downright racist, then they're being downright racist. In an idle world, I'd like to say, yeah, we shouldn't use any racist words and we shouldn't have uh, racist intent. But in reality, I, I, I just believe that it's it's nonsensical to be to be using certain words um, and then saying that no one else can say them if they're racist when you're using them again uh, to describe yourself. Yeah, and there are certain things similar. When I first heard that word, I didn't know what it meant. Had I said it, I would have offended someone even though I didn't know what it meant, mm. if you know what I mean. There's also, like, context means, I'm going back to context again, like, it does, like, I didn't, I don't think I've said it, I might, I don't think I've said that word, I might have said it at some point, but like, at the point I didn't know what it meant, and I wouldn't say it, because I'm afraid of, well, I'm not afraid, I don't like the idea of offending someone, it happens naturally anyway, but like, 
yeah, people will always be offended regardless. And that Someone's will always, gonna be, yeah. that Someone... always be racism. Someone's going to be offended by this, even we're talking around these words, and someone we've, we've offended someone today. Almost definitely. But again, context doesn't matter. Let's hope that it's not taken out of context. Alright. Well, anyway, um, thank you for watching uh, this episode of uh, Politically Challenged. Um, of, of course, you'll uh, find all of the uh, details about, uh, <clears throat> about what we've talked about in the description box with links to our social media accounts, so you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It's goodbye from Ron. And it's goodbye from you. See you next time, guys.